Okay, so last time we had this lemma about morphisms of projective varieties, and what it said was that if we have some homogeneous elements, F0 through Fm, all of the same degree, then we can uh, use those to define a morphism, uh, or you just take a point x uh, to the point with a homogeneous coordinates given by these uh, functions. Okay, and and the thing you had to be careful about is you need to subtract off the vanishing locuses of your functions because you can't send a point to uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, um, and uh, we had one example of that with uh, the general linear group giving a projective automorphisms, a projective space. Uh, let's do another example here. So for this example, Let's have uh, a b equal to one zero uh, and all zeros in p n, and we'll have l be the line that is the vanishing locus of x zero um, in p n. And uh, I think we mentioned before that l is isomorphic to p n minus one. All right, and let's try and define a map uh, f from pn uh, minus a to pn minus 1. And that'll be given by taking a point x0, x1, up to xn, uh, and just forgets the x0. Like that. Okay. By the lemma that we just reviewed at the beginning of this lecture, this is a, this is a morphism, right? We we picked uh, some homogeneous elements at x1 through xn. They're all of degree one, and we subtracted off the vanishing locus. The vanishing locus of x1 through xn is exactly the point a. So that's why we had to subtract it off from the domain. Okay. And sort of the the way to think about this is let me draw the picture first, and then we'll talk about why it's the right picture. Is um, Let's draw a picture of the line L, and we'll put a point A up here. And then uh, for any x, so if x happens to be right here, um, you just draw the line between x and A, and there's a unique line through x and A. And then the intersection point here will be the image f of x. OK, let, let's talk about that for just a second and make sure uh, we believe that, that, or we know why that's the right thing. So the unique line, so the line through A and X is, what is it? Well, you can parameterize it like this, uh, S, T, X1, T, X2, dot, 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 up to T, X, N. Okay, where S and T are the parameters from, from uh, P1. All right, so you're supposed to think of P1 as, as being a line. P1 is isomorphic to, uh, it says it's a, it's a projective line. And let's make sure it actually goes through the points that we want it to. So when S is equal to X0 and T is equal to 1, then we get exactly our point x and when uh, s is equal to uh, 1 and t is equal to 0 uh, we get our point a which is what we wanted okay good um, the next thing we want to do is compute the intersection of this line with l so um, so intersection with l well l is just the the line that's defined by v of x uh, the vanishing of x zero so that's just uh, points of the form zero uh, tx one tx two up to txn okay um, so the s doesn't come into it at all and this is uh, we can get rid of the t. Kind of factor that out, and we just get the single point here. Okay, and this is this is exactly um, our, our f of x, right? 
Okay, uh, except for we have to worry about this identification here. We have the, that um, this PN, L is identified with PN minus one uh, in exactly this way that uh, uh, you just chop off that zero here. Okay. This is called the projection from A to the linear subspace L. And so, yeah, you should, you should think of moving this x point around and as you move x around then the f of x moves back and forth along this line now you just uh, draw this line through x and a okay let me just make a couple more remarks about this first uh, this this picture we here is uh, is uh, not a standard f and subset uh, I mean, what are these uh, UIs that we, that was kind of a standard open cover? Why? Because uh, the point A only appears in, in U0, right? Because uh, all these coordinates are zero except for the first, except for the zeroth one, right? So, so uh, A only lives in U0, it's not in any of the others, but uh, but on U0, L is, there's none, none of L, L, L is gone, right? That's the complement of U0. All right, so this picture is, is the right picture to think about, but it, it's not one of the standard open affine sets. Okay. okay, and then uh, one more remark that uh, it's not possible to extend this morphism. So you might wonder, can we turn this into a morphism from all of Pn to Pn minus 1, which means we need to define what it is, is at A. But uh, if you think about it intuitively, that, that can't be possible, right? Because the limit as x approaches A is not well defined. If I just uh, move this x closer and closer to A, uh, along this line, then uh, then you can see that the limit has to, you know, be this point f of x. But if I had a different line, you know, maybe maybe I had a different line here, y and f of y. Then I and then you start moving y closer and closer to a. Then you have f of a should be right here. So okay, so so there can't be a well-defined limit. And the last remark is, uh, we call this a projection from A to the linear subspace L. Uh, this same thing can work for any point of projective space and any uh, linear subspace, like uh, the, the hyperplane here. Um, and that will just differ from this one by a projective automorphism. So we just picked some coordinates that were convenient to write things down in, but that's not important. You could pick a different uh, subspace of dimension, linear subspace of dimension n minus one and a different point, and that would work just as well. Let's now do an example where we restrict this map to a projective subvariety. So let's look at the x being the vanishing set of a homogeneous polynomial x0, x2 minus x1 squared. This will be in P2. And let's define the map f from x to P1. Or sorry, yes, to P1 by um, x0. Let me write it over here. x0, x1 x2 maps to, we'll give kind of a piecewise definition, uh, x1, x2, if um, x is not equal to 1, 0, 0, or this is x here, and x0, x1, if x is not equal to uh, 0, zero one all right the first thing to worry about is whether or not this is well defined well if you have a x0 x2 minus x1 squared equals zero um, that tells me that um, x1 x2 is equal to well let's multiply everything by x1 and it's still the same point Okay, and now we'll make the substitution x1 squared equals x0, x2 coming from our equation. And now you cancel off the x2s. Okay, so we get x1, x2 is the same as uh, x0, x1. So these two definitions agree. Of course, we should be careful that the right things are non-zero at the right times, but that will happen exactly on, on the overlaps like we want. Okay, and the next thing we should note is that uh, this map 
it agrees with the projection uh, that we talked about in the last example. Um, right, so remember in the last example, the map was just to uh, chop off the x0, so that's what we got here. Except for now, we have, uh, we have extended the definition um, to a. Uh, equals like that, right? Okay, so let, let's try and draw a picture of what's going on here. So once again, we have our, our, our line L and X here is a, is a degree two, it's, it's, so it's like a conic, so I'm gonna draw it as a kind of a ellipse looking thing here. And let's put our point A right here. And then if you have a point X line on the conic, then you just do exactly the same thing we did before we draw a line. So the capital X represents the variety. This is the little X point. You draw a line through X and A, and then this here is, is F of X. Okay, and the interesting thing here is that now there is a well-defined limit. As X moves along, uh, as little X, this point moves along big X, the variety, and gets closer and closer to A, then uh, this line here will approach the, the tangent line. So, and so if, if that's the tangent line here, this will be uh, f of a. All right, and uh, here's, a, here's a remark. In fact, uh, this f is an, isomorph is an isomorphism. You can kind of see uh, geometrically why it should be, be bijective, right? Because if if you have any line in projective space, it should intersect a conic in exactly two points counted with multiplicity. One of those points will be A, and uh, one of those points will be uh, X. So, uh, so that's how you get. So, so starting with any point on L, you can, uh, you can draw the line through through that point and through A, and then you'll find the preimage X. Or if you want to, you can even write down uh, the inverse explicitly. So. This P1, that's equal to the L. Uh, you can um, make a map to X like this. So in the textbook, it says it's uh, Y0, Y1 maps to Y0 squared, Y0, Y1, Y1 squared. You, uh, you need to check that these satisfy uh, this equation, uh, X0, X2 minus X1 squared. That should be an easy check. And then, and then check that that's, uh, that's the right inverse. Okay, and of course, this f inverse here is, is a morphism because it's given by uh, three degree two uh, polynomials. Okay, uh, and in fact, uh, with just a little bit more work, we could show that uh, every uh, smooth conic in P2 is isomorphic to P1. All right, so this, this is an interesting fact. So we just showed that this particular conic, so by conic, I mean a degree two uh, hypersurface, right? Something that's defined by one equation of degree two uh, in P2. And in this particular case, we, we've kind of seen that it's uh, isomorphic to P1. Uh, this L here is, is a P1. Um, but in fact, it turns out every smooth conic is isomorphic to uh, P1. Um, and by, by a very similar argument, or by changing coordinates to put it into a special form. Okay, so that, that's kind of an interesting fact. So we already knew that uh, every degree one equation uh, in P2 would, would define something that's isomorphic to P1, or, or at least that's, that's not too hard to see. But in fact, the degree two equations uh, also give you something isomorphic to P1. But, uh, that's not gonna be true for degree three, you get uh, something else, but we'll maybe talk about that later. All right, our next goal is to check that uh, projective varieties are actually varieties. Uh, so the only thing left to check is that they're separated. Projective varieties are separated and uh, thus they are varieties. Okay, that would justify the name projective varieties. 
Okay, uh, in order to do this, we need to figure out how to describe the product. Um, so let me just make one remark. Uh, it's not the case that, you know, a product of projective spaces um, is isomorphic to a projective space. So, I mean, for affine spaces, A1 cross A1 was isomorphic to A2, uh, but for projective spaces, that doesn't work. Um, we, this uh, this statement here is not so hard to see, right? Because in P1 cross P1, you have uh, two parallel lines, two lines that don't intersect, right? Um, you can, you know, pick one copy uh, of a P1 to be a line and another copy here and corresponding to two different points of the, of say the left-hand side. So that would give you two lines that don't intersect. Whereas we know that two distinct lines in P2 always intersect. So that'd be one way to see it. I believe uh, one of the exercises that I, that I assigned uh, shows that in general this is the case that the product is not equal to a projective space. We need to understand products of projective spaces, right? Because to check if something's separated, we need to check, for example, that we need to check that the diagonal in uh, Pn cross Pn is closed. Okay, so the product of projective spaces is not a projective space, but it is a projective variety uh, under the segre embedding. So we'll need to talk about the segre embedding. Uh, this actually comes up quite a bit, so it's uh, worth talking about. And will also uh, give us, uh, allow us to access this uh, separated property. All right, so let's take uh, uh, Pn cross Pm. We'll do something a little more general where we allow ourselves to have a different uh, different dimensions of projective spaces and i want to map that to p capital n and what is um what is capital n capital n will be n plus one m plus one minus one okay and uh, so let's have the variables for Pn be x0 through uh, xn. And for Pm, we'll have a y0 through ym. And then for Pn, we'll have uh, variables z, i, j, where i goes between um, 0 and n. The i index sort of corresponds to the x's. And uh, the J index goes from zero to M and corresponds to the Y's. All right, so let's now define this map. So this map takes a point uh, X zero through XM and Y zero through X zero through XN and Y zero through YM and maps it so that the uh, ZIJ coordinate is just uh, XI uh, YJ. Okay, it's not so hard to check this is well defined, right? So if uh, you rescale these, this point x, so multiply all these by lambda, then that will just, uh, since every every z coordinate here has one x in it, uh, that will just multiply those all by some the same scalar lambda. So it will represent the same point of p capital N, and the same thing for the y's. If you rescale the y's, it also rescales all the z's. So this, is, uh, this map is well defined, set theoretically. All right, so let's write down the theorem about this map. So theorem, um, the image uh, x uh, is a projective variety. given by um, the vanishing locus of Zij times ZKL minus ZIL ZKJ. Okay, for uh, all the, the letters that make sense. So I and K are between zero and M, N and J and L are between 0 and M. All right, so you take, uh, take all the polynomials of that form, and I'm claiming that defines uh, the image of this map here. Okay, and then part B, we should check that um, F is an 
uh, is an isomorphism. Uh, when, it, uh, when you restrict the the codomain. Okay. Proof. Uh, let's look at part A first. The first thing to check is that uh, the image is actually contained in this vanishing locus. That's not so hard because uh, you know, you just you just plug in these x's and y's into the z's. So this this uh, equation here just says x i y j times x k y l minus x i y l times x k y j uh, equals zero. But that's clear just because multiplication is commuted. To. Next, we need to check that every point on this vanishing locus. Uh, is actually in the image. So um, without loss of generality, uh, let's assume that z0, 0, 0 uh, is equal to 1. All right, at least one of the z's has to be uh, non-zero. Well, we might as well assume it's the 0, 0, 1. And then you can, uh, since we're in projective space, we can rescale them all so that that particular one is 1. All right, then using one of these equations here, uh, you see that uh, zij well, okay, sorry, I'm imagining z0, z0, zero right here. Uh, then times zij is equal to zi0 and z0j. Okay, but now uh, if I look at this, this looks very similar to my uh, my equation here, zij equals uh, xi times yj. So all I have to do now is assign xj, so let x, or sorry, xi to be uh, zi0, and yj to be equal to z, 0, j. Uh, then the points defined this way, so the x and y defined by these formulas, will map to my point uh, z as I want. OK. So we've checked that the image is precisely this projective variety defined by these equations. Next, we want to check whether uh, f is injective. So that that's goes under part B. So um, uh, let Z be a point in, in this uh, vanishing locus. And again, let's assume that uh, Z0, zero, 0 is equal to 1. OK, now remember, and let's uh, also take um, some X and Y that maps to Z. And we want to show that X, these X and Y is uniquely determined. Uh, that there's not multiple things that map to the same z. All right, the first thing we notice is that um, x0 and um, y0 are not 0. Why? Because z0, 0 is equal to, remember, z0, 0 is equal to x0, y0. So the, neither of those can be 0. So um, using our projective coordinate, coordinates, uh, you know, pass, let's pass to the affine coordinates where uh, x0 equals 1 and y0 equals 1. And now we have from the definition of the map that zi0 is xi y0. Well, y0 is 1, so this is just xi. And similarly, uh, z0j will be x0yj, which is just yj. All right, so th this, this shows me that um, xi, yj are determined by z determined uniquely by z. Um, so that tells me that um, uh, this map is injective. All right, and therefore it's bijective as a map to its image. And furthermore, this calculation that we just did shows that uh, on, on affine, when you cover it with affine sharps, the map f and f inverse are given by polynomials, right? So xi corresponds to zi0. Uh, that's a nice map. All right, so, all right, so put that all together, we get f is an isomorphism. All right, so let's remember the statement where we were trying to show that this uh, this map from p n cross p m 
uh, mapping into PN was an isomorphism onto its image. And furthermore, we know that its image is a projective variety, and we know explicitly what equations define that projective variety. Let's look at a, an example, the easiest example of this is when we're looking at a P1 cross P1 uh, mapping into uh, P3. Uh, how does the map go? It's uh, x1, x0, x1, y0, y1, and you map to every possible combination, x0, y0, x0, y1, x1, y0, and x1, y1. Okay, and the image here, so the image is, is uh, x, which is the vanishing locus of, uh, of a degree 2 polynomial z0, 0, z1, 1, minus z1, 0, z0, 1. Okay, and of course, uh, the z0, 0 corresponds to this first coordinate here. The z1, 1 corresponds to the last coordinate. z1, 0 corresponds to this coordinate with x1, y0 in it, and z0, 1 is the coordinate here with uh, x0, y1. Okay, and there's a nice picture of this. So I'm not going to try and draw it. Let's look at the textbook. So P1 cross P1, if you think of P1 as a line, then you might think of P1 cross P1 as, as this grid here. You know, it has a, it has a, a, a ruling in, in two different directions. So, you know, if you fix a point on one of these P1s, then you get a line like this. And if you fix a point on the other P1, you get a line like this, and they kind of intersect. You, know, uh, you might imagine this kind of like a grid. The Segre embedding is embedding this thing into P3, which you should think of as like a three-dimensional space. So here's a three-dimensional space, and then the vanishing locus of a degree two polynomial that we were looking at just a moment ago. This uh, this degree two polynomial here. Uh, that's this gray thing, the, the vanishing locus of that. And you can kind of see how the the rulings on on this uh, P1 cross P1 correspond here, right? In this in this two de in this degree two surface, uh, there's some lines. Uh, there's two sets of lines, and they intersect uh, just like this. Okay, so you can think about that. That's a nice picture. Now we're ready to prove the theorem that we promised that uh, projective varieties are varieties. So, projective varieties are separated, uh, hence they are varieties. All right, we, we already checked that they were pre-varieties. All right, so let's do the proof. Uh, the first observation is that it's enough to check for Pn, right? I think we already made the remark that a, a sub pre variety of a variety is automatically a variety, right? So, um, so we can just check that Pn is separated. All right, let's write down a description of the diagonal of Pn. Uh, one way to describe it is this you take the points uh, x0 through xn and y0 through yn. So that, that those are, that's a point in the product, right? Um, the, and I'm claiming that the diagonal are those ones that satisfy um, x i y j minus x j y i um, equals zero for all i and j. All right, and, and that's supposed to be a subset of a p n cross p n where the first pn has coordinates x's and the second pn has coordinates y. All right, why is that the correct thing? Um, well, these um, these things here are exactly the minors of the following matrix, the matrix x0, x1, and y0, 
y1 up to yn. All right, so remember a minor is a, a determinant of a square submatrix. So, so we look at the different two by two submatrices. So here's a submatrix, here's a submatrix, and then you also do the one that's like this one and this one. Okay, if you take all those minors, uh, you get exactly these equations that I highlighted in green. Okay, and the, and the fact from linear algebra that you need to remember is that if the minors uh, of a matrix uh, all vanish, that tells you that the matrix is not full rank. So in the case of a matrix with two, in the case of a matrix with only uh, two rows, this tells you the matrix has a uh, rank one or less. Okay. But this matrix uh, having rank one exactly means that the X is the one of the rows is a multiple of the other row, which is exactly saying that the, that they represent the same point in projective space. Okay, and that, that's exactly what we want. We want this diagonal to pick out uh, the pairs X's and Y's such that they represent the same point in projective space. All right, so that will correspond exactly to all the minors of this matrix vanishing. Okay, uh, now we're almost done though because if you look at this equation here, so these are exactly the things that we saw with the Sager coordinates, right? So this will be the vanishing locus of Zij minus Z, Zji uh, in the Segre embedding. Okay, and um, okay, and, and that does it, right? So, so this is closed because it's defined by the vanishing of some equations.